Everybody wants the wave of the winter. It's gonna be the barrel of your life. Pipe, off the wall, rock piles, log cabins. It just goes on and on. You've got guys really pushing the limits, right? It's $25,000 for first place. It, it's bringing out the cream of the crop of everybody. The wave of the winter, anyone could win it. Style, commitment, how critical it is, the size of the wave, you know, factor in on who is gonna get the wave of the winter. That's the goal, that's why you come to Hawaii, to get the wave of the winter. It's those days that aren't perfect and aren't going off and aren't glassy and aren't a million photographers out. Those are the days that you really like earn your stripes or you start to figure stuff out. November was, was typically slow. Some of our extra tropical sources of swell that we saw like in early October for that big jaw swell had really dried up. Uh, high pressure tends to take over a lot of the North Pacific in, in November as well. So there are a couple of swells here and there, but overall a uh, really pretty slow month. It's definitely a surprise to get a wave of the winter entry at Rock Piles. Going out there, it's not like there's anything in my mind that I'm going to get an entry, you know. It's just kind of going out there to surf because it's like, it's one of my favorite waves. Last year, Reef's wave, I knew from the beginning that he was going to win with that wave. It was a really good wave. It was, you know, a personal best for me. It was. Just an insane ride, I thought. You gotta know the guy, he's six foot five, and he still was dwarfed by the size of that barrel. That's like a phantom wave that someone only makes once every five to 10 years. He set that bar super high, but you kinda had to think, watching that year unfold, that maybe someone was gonna get a better wave, and it just never happened. There's something about pipeline and the wave of the winter, it makes a lot of sense. It is the proving ground. Python back door, you know, is the most dynamic on the North Shore. It's where everyone gets pitted out of their gourd, you know, it's the biggest barrels on the North Shore. You know, that type of wave really fits the criteria for this event. I mean, it's pretty entertaining to watch someone pull into a 10, 12 foot barrel that's just crazy and usually the drops are just out of control. definitely a lot of days with a lot of really good moments. It wasn't like the eight hour perfect pipe day. It was like firing for an hour, off for two, firing for three, off. And when you think it would fire again, it just wouldn't be happening again.
I like pipe that's big and wild and kind of out of control, so it's just a lot more work. This wave that really loaded up on the reef and I had a GoPro in my mouth. I turned it on and had to start paddling, stood up, and then I started fumbling trying to make sure I hit record and bottom turn at the same time. So there's a lot of multitasking and I uh, ended up just getting this incredible barrel. It was probably the biggest pipeline barrel I've ever been in. I thought McCoy Rothmans was pretty cool, how he manhandled that barrel. So that was definitely one of the more technical barrels of the year. Both Ricardo and Anthony both got their waves on those days when it was there's a lot of wash through sets coming and the whole crowd just spreads out. December 30th was a pretty special day. I can actually remember a couple of pretty nuts, just the drops of nuts and then just big open perfect barrels. Yeah, it was kind of a dream, like a dream day at five. Like everything that I wished was just coming to me. When I did the takeoff, I was just doing my born turn, I saw that thing just sucking like a super strong. I was like, oh shit, this thing gonna turn like into a trend. I was completely blind because I couldn't see the spell was super, super strong and I, the only thing that I remember was just like a, that white thing come like closer and closer and closer, then it came out. Some people said that that one was even better than my first one. If you compare like those waves that are like, totally different, I would say the first barrel was like a way better than the second one. But the second one was just so relaxed and my, like a good style, good good wave, solid solid size as well. That was like definitely one of the better waves of the winter for sure. But then again, it was like it was just such a perfect wave. You know, there's not much you could have done wrong on it. It was a sick barrel. It's just it needs to be a 12 footer. Every piece of ground When you see me in the sky I forgot you by and by You gotta have the right fins and the right shaper to feel, you know, confident. The board I won with in 2010, it's a big board, but if you get a big wave, then, you know, it matches each other. For pipeline and backdoor generally, I ride a, a step up and it's a step up for me, not a step up for John John. His step up is a 6'4". The boards I ride at pipe are kind of range between 6'0 to 6'8". I don't really go any bigger or any smaller. You know, a lot of guys generally that ride a little bit bigger boards will sit a little further out and I'll ride a smaller board and they'll sit a little further in. I like to be sitting like under the wave. I reckon the smaller board works better in this situation. I'm kind of used to getting better with smaller boards. Basically anything from 7.0 down is usually a thruster. And above that I'll have a lot more quads. Sometimes guys get their quads and they don't like them, they stay on their thrusters. Forfins tend to outrun the barrel sometimes. I don't ride quads at pipe, period, or backdoor. Uh, I think they're too fast for backdoor. I don't trust 
the quad setup at Pipe. Well, I was coasting through your mind. Uncle Mike's back doorway, that was so sick. I watched it like a week ago and I was tripping out. Those guys have been out there almost longer than anyone. They're still out there getting the best waves. Michael Hope couldn't make five bucks in a contest. Right now he's up for $25,000 for the ride of the year. And at 56, Mike? None. Wassel's back door wave. It's definitely by far the best ripe I've seen all winter. My partner said, you know what? The city gives you a break. Take it, get out there, go catch a wave. Okay, waxed up a board, paddled out, didn't even get my hair wet, caught that right, put the board away, went right back to the tower. I'm a 39-year-old lifeguard for the city and county of Honolulu. I am just fortunate to have my name tossed in with the John Johns and Healy's and Slater's and Jamie O'Brien's. Kelly Slater's barrel was also really perfect. There was a little more south wind on that wave, so the face of the wave was just groomed perfectly. But it's like cactus on scale. January was pretty cyclonically active. We had a lot of uh, storm activity in the Western Pacific, so there were a, a fair amount of swells. Some of the, the wind and weather got weird a little bit here and there. Um, we had a lot of days where it was lighter winds in the morning and then you get sea breezes in the afternoon, but with all the storm activity in, in the Western North Pacific actually did have to see a fair bit of swell in January. There was a handful of international guys that got really good waves. But I mean, they wrote them perfect. They have such this innate, like kind of uh, symbiotic relationship, you know, with this wave. And you're looking at them like, how did they choose that line? Where did they learn that? The judging panel is really good. It's a fair judging panel. They're very unbiased judges and they're very honest. They're very performance oriented. I think you're going to get a really accurate winner. Yeah, you can't really argue with any kind of results of that judging panel. You know, those guys definitely know what they're talking about. Sonny Garcia, he's won more triple crowns than anybody in the history of the world. You've got Jerry Lopez, named synonymous with Pipeline. Poncho Sullivan, who qualified for the world tour, starting off here at Pipeline at 30 years of age. And Ross Williams, the cat. You really got to impress those guys because they've seen it all. You want to see someone committed. You want to see them looking good while they're doing it. And uh, size always helps. It's usually, it usually has to be a a really big wave at a pipe to win. You know, did they stall at the bottom? How deep were they? 
uh, the size and intensity of the wave and, and how difficult it was to negotiate the barrel. That's the criteria and how we balance it, I mean, which, you know, comes first, which weighs more, style and wave size really have the most to do with my personal selections. John John's wave was absolutely incredible. I, at one point, when I had narrowed it down, I, I had that as my top pick from the takeoff to how deep he was in the barrel and just how heavy that wave spit. The degree of difficulty was super high. You look at all those clips from the Wave of the Winter and you look at it and just go, oh my, I, it's like a sensory overload. They're all so close in my eyes. Best ones I think is Ricardo and Anthony. This year definitely was more difficult than last year to judge. There was 10 to 20 to even 30 amazing rides at Pipe. I had to look at Ricardo's Wave over and over again, John John's Wave and one of Anthony Walsh's Waves because that was kind of where what I had narrowed it down to based on the criteria. And Ricardo's winning wave, you know, just the size of that wave, his positioning, how deep he got in that barrel, and how difficult it must have been to, to negotiate that, you know, and come out was, uh, was hands down wave of the winner. Oh, shit. Buddy. <laughs> Congratulations! Oh my God! I can't believe that, man. Did it? Did it? That wasn't the best surprise I ever had. I couldn't even imagine that like, that was coming from you. You know, like oh, it is. Huge for me, for my country, for my friends where I live. All, all, all the boys, like, a, they would never imagine like a guy coming from South Brazil, super country place. I'm the only professional surfer in the place. Going to Hawaii and get the wave of the winter, so. Not everyone knows how big is it for, is, is it for me. Like, means, means all, all the work I did all my life. Every time that I go out a pipe and off the wall, back door, I always think like, oh, is that the day that pipe gonna choose me? Is that the day that pipe gonna like look for me and say you're gonna you're gonna get the ball, my friend? Looking at it over and over again, there was just absolutely not one speck of water out of place. It was so perfect. It was what I would like to call iconic for pipeline. Some ways are different than others. This was one of those different waves. This was a wave that was just a step above all the other waves. When it broke, it broke very cleanly. The lip line was perfect. It obviously was very hollow. He didn't have to do anything once he made the drop and you know cut that corner under the lip. The wave did all the work.
for me it was epic. <laughs> I don't know about the other guys, but for me it has been like it has been epic. Everything that I wished was just happening. I don't know, I just feel super good to be like a connected with those waves. There were so many good tube rides, so many like big deep barrels. It seemed like the bar got raised a little bit more. It's just more of something that we always did at Pipeline. We always wanted to get the best wave. Why do they lie? They do it all.